today's project show and tell a game gear now from the outside obviously this just looks like your standard game gear buttons cartridge slot sonic batteries etc um, but this is actually probably one of my favorite uh, projects that i've put together over the the years um, obviously it looks completely stock from the outside but when you switch it on you're obviously not greeted with the Sega! but instead you're greeted with a blue screen which then quickly turns to a bunch of code running up the screen here and if you could guess already this has a raspberry pi running inside um, this is just a fun little project i had seen at least one other person do it online so i figured i would give it a try um, first we'll boot it up here go through just the few games that i have on here show something working and then i'd like to just tear into it and show you guys what i did on the inside to make it all work All right, so I've only got a few games on here. Um, nothing really to report of. The um, graphical interface that I chose, I don't remember the name of, but I liked it just because it was simple, fairly easy to read. Um, it just has a quick picture of what it is that you would be emulating, and then um, a list of how many games, obviously, that you've got. So let's open up some Tetris here. In the future, I'd like to go in and change things so it shows box art and that sort of thing, but I just haven't had the time on this build yet. All right, so here it comes loading up here. Now, what I love about um, this build specifically is that I was able to get everything working as it should. Um, so as you can hear, we've got the music from Tetris playing it gets louder and quieter with the volume slider here the headphone out also works just like it should um, power works and the power switch obviously works um, but yeah it's just a fun little console um, everything works how it should and plays how it should um, you know you've got your essentially a and b to rotate the pieces your start to pause and then your up, down, left, and rights all work as you would expect them to. Um, so let's go ahead and close out of everything um, and give this a quick tear apart and show what all is on the inside. Now everything um, is exactly as you would expect for a Game Gear. It runs off of the AAA batteries. You can see here it takes six of them. Nobody ever accused the Game Gear of being environmentally friendly or easy on batteries. Um, but let's get this torn into here and then we can look at what makes her tick. now that we've got those out let's crack this open so i designed it to sort of hinge open um, in theory there we go so oh, there's a fifth screw i guess i did have one tucked in there all right so just tearing into it here um, i'm just going to sort of work my way from the right side of the shell to the left um, on the top here we have the power board um, this is just the standard power board that is in any Sega Game Gear, um, which is great because that means that this would be an exchangeable part if something were to break. Um, it does operate off of the batteries that um, you already saw. It also works with the uh, wall charger as well. Um, so you're able to plug it in, get power from the wall or from your car adapter, and it would work there as well because all the circuitry is still there for the power. We're simply stealing 5 volts off of the um, pins here and running them straight to the Pi and the screen below. On the opposite side here, we do have the soundboard. As you can see, um, all I had to do to this to get it working was recap it, which is a fairly standard practice. 
for the Sega Game Gear. Um, a lot of these have sound issues. You swap out all the caps and it magically works. So I did that fix. Um, and then it's as simple as running power, left and right audio and ground through to this board. And then it works just fine. Um, that pulls everything from the Pi, obviously, um, to get the sound. So we just wired in to the um, sound hat that we put in. The Raspberry Pi Zero um, doesn't have native audio out. It doesn't have a headphone jack or anything. So we added this hat here, which pulls sound from the GPIO pins, plugs it through, and then we're able to route that through to the um, board on the other side of the case here. With that as well, you can see the screen just moving over to the other side here. Um, works just off of a standard HDMI. It is also powered off of the 5 volts from the power board that we get over here. The controls um, are probably the trickiest part, um, but also the um, simplest at the same time. So I've already taken the screws off of this here um, so that we could just flip this over and see. Um, all we've done is tied into the test points for the pads themselves. So we've got obviously your up, down, left, and right. Um, those all have a corresponding test pad on the side here, and then they have a common ground between them. So I've pulled that from up here. It was just a much simpler place to be able to route cables out and around. Um, but with that, it uses the standard um, rubber dome that you would see on any Game Gear, um, standard buttons and everything. So you still get the same exact feel that you would for the original. Um, the only tricky bit with doing it this way um, is as you can see, there's no controller or anything that was hacked up and put inside here. And we are routing all of the inputs from both the D-pad as well as the action buttons over to the GPIO pins here. And then we ran a program, which I'll have to um, track down the GitHub and link that in the description down below. But we ran a program that allows us to simply map GPIO inputs directly to essentially a keyboard input. Um, so that we can use all the buttons um, to navigate through menus, play games, etc. So yeah, overall, it was a very fun little build to put together. I do have plans to come in and fix some of this up a little bit. Um, I'd love to be able to come in and properly heat shrink some of these wires. Um, they're all just sort of held down with electrical tape right now because I didn't want to make anything too permanent until I knew that it worked. Obviously, it now all works. So I'm going to come back in one of these days and get that all tidied up and buttoned up. But overall, fun build. Um, great little put together. Um, side note that I don't think I mentioned, I did have to sacrifice a poor um, Game Gear cartridge, as you saw at the beginning. Um, this is just the back half or front half, depending on how you're looking at it, the label side of a Game Gear game, um, because I wanted it to look like a Game Gear from the outside, getting that real stealth sleeper vibe then I had to uh, do something to cover up the big gaping cartridge hole since we obviously are not putting any cartridges in this Game Gear at any point in time in the future. So we hacked up a Sega Game Gear game. Um, we've got Sonic in here. We just dremeled out some of the side pieces here um, and some places so that wires and cables and things could route around. But on the outside, it all looks as you would expect it to um, with a game on the inside. So looks like we're playing Sonic 2, but really we could be playing Tetris, Pokemon, you name it. So yeah, that's just a quick little show and tell of one of my favorite projects that I've put together. Um, everything works really great. It's fun to play around with, um, and it was really fun to build. If you guys want more detailed information, just let me know in the comments down below, and I can definitely do a more detailed video um, going over how I program the buttons, that sort of thing, if needed. But yeah, it was Fun to share this with you guys. Like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff down below, and have a nice day.